Good morning. Welcome to my studio. My name is Elizabeth Bostick and today we are creating some beautiful February flower inspired bookmarks. The two flowers for February according to the Farmer's Almanac are the Primrose and the Violet. For today's supplies I have my watercolors and 140 pound arch paper cut into a 2 inch by 8 inch strip and then I put a little hole for the tassel at the top, which in retrospect, you should do that last. <laughs> for this bookmark, I'm using the name Sophia, which I write directly up the center of the bookmark. I used a ruler to make a straight line to follow, but you can freehand it if you would like. Then for each petal of the primrose, I use a heart shape to make the four petals. And then for the stem, I have a wavy line, and for each leaf, it's just a very thin, very thin uh, pointy leaf that they have. After I'm happy with the leaves, I add just a few little buds up towards the top. They actually look like they could be small leaves themselves with the um, wild primrose. The leaves are pretty thin and their buds are pretty thin as well. I'm using my kneaded eraser to lighten up my pencil lines so that they show up less underneath the watercolor. The kneaded eraser, eraser is amazing for that. Once you put the watercolor on top of it, you won't be able to go back and erase the pencil lines. So I really recommend the kneaded eraser to pick up those pencil lines gently and leave enough behind for you to follow as a guideline. For the petals of the primrose, I'm going to show you how to do them two different ways. The first way involves putting some of the watered down color on the paintbrush and going around that outline of the petal. So this color isn't watered down um, too much it's still a pretty brilliant or bright color so I'm taking it and going around the outline of the first heart-shaped primrose petal and bringing it down just a little bit so that there's still some white space towards the bottom of the petal and then rinsing off that paint from the brush and going from that bottom white area into the painted area so that those two um, blend nicely. It makes um, kind of a textured petal look, leaving some white space at the bottom. And then for the second petal, I'm doing this in a different way where I start off with my mostly rinsed off brush. <laughs> There's still a little bit too much pink in there so I'm wiping that off. And I'm making sure that the entire petal is wet. It can just be clear water on the entire petal. And after I have the entire petal to be completely wet, making sure that I don't miss an area, I go back into that same color, the wash of it, and I'm uh, dabbing it onto the outline of the petal so that it's creating this nice uh, wet on wet effect where it will have a very soft drying line. It won't give you a hard drying line as long as that color is drying into the wet, wetted down uh, paper, the wet petal. I then go into the pan of watercolor where it's the brightest pigment of that same color and add that to the outline of the heart and let it also go into that petal wet on wet. You can let it dry just like that, um, but I'm showing you how you can still manipulate that color a bit where you dry off your brush just a little bit on the paper towel or the cloth that you have and then go into it and you can still move that paint around just a little bit. For the stem and the leaves, I have a nice, rich um, green color, which I have made from the emerald green, which is a PG7. 
and the burnt sienna mixed together, I think just creates a, a very nice green for botanical. So I'm adding just a little bit more of the emerald green and a little bit more of the burnt sienna to my wash of the color, which is just um, water, maybe like five brushfuls of water, and then I add the color to it. I'm testing out the green on a scrap piece of watercolor paper, which I highly recommend doing. That way you can see if you are good with the color or not before you put it down on your paper. For the next step, I'm starting at the end of the name and I'm going up the stem and then up the outline of the leaves, leaving a bit of white in the center as I'm not sure if I want a highlight there or not. And then adding in a little bit of extra color, charging, charging the still wet leaves with just a little extra color. When you charge the leaf, um, I think it is fun to do to add just a little extra interest to the leaf. You, all you need to do is put a little more color on your brush and just touch the tip of it to either at the base of the leaf or the tip of the leaf most often and it just adds a little more color or maybe a darker shade of the same color to that part of the leaf. As long as the leaf is still wet when you add in a little bit more color to it, it'll have a nice soft drying line. I'm adding that same magenta rose color to the inside of the buds once the green um, outlines have dry. For the third petal, I'm using that same wash of magenta rose and following the pencil outline, making sure that the two initial petals are completely dry before I get started. Once I have the outline complete of the part that shows, I rinse off my brush, most of the paint off of it, and I'm using, you can use just water for this part, and you're going right up against the part that you've already painted with just the water on your brush, and it draws the paint from the outline into it to create a soft um, a soft effect where the outline is still dark and the interior of the petal has a very light pink color. I then use my paper towel to blot off some of the water towards the center of the flower as I'm going to be adding yellow to the very center of the primrose and I want it to be more of a stark white. After that, I add a little bit of the magenta rose to the outline once again and allow that to have that nice wet on wet effect with um, the paint that's already down, the very light wash, the water down wash. The fourth petal is done pretty much the same way, outlining on the pencil line with the wash, rinsing off the brush, adding in some little extra color towards the end and voila <laughs> the next step is to add the cadmium yellow light into the very inside of the buds as I was looking at the primroses a lot of their buds had a bit more of a warm color to them and I thought that was a nice touch to add, to include for while the four petals are drying. I'm going ahead and writing in 
or writing over the name Sophia with a painter's marker. It's in the metallic gold and it's the ultra fine tip. So the ultra fine tip painter's marker in metallic gold. For the very inside of the primrose, I'm adding more of that cadmium yellow light. And then before that completely dries, I'm adding in a little bit of that magenta rose and I just dab it right into the center, let it do its really pretty wet on wet thing and let it dry. Once it's completely dry, you can get rid of any unnecessary pencil lines with your kneaded eraser and you have um, your finished Primrose February bookmark and all you need to do now is add the tassel. For this next bookmark, we have the beautiful violets. You'll want to start off with your 140 pound watercolor paper cut to two inches by either eight inches or six inches. You can write your name or maybe a saying up the center of it. And then from the last letter of either a name or the saying, I started the stem. And for each violet, if you think of the violet flower as a heart on top or maybe bunny ears on top and then three petals on the bottom with the center petal being the largest on the bottom and then one small petal on each side it kind of breaks it down into an easier uh, flower to draw and then the the leaves of the violets they're so cute they're heart shapes and so you can um, add in a leaf if you want to as well after I have the drawing as I like it, I used my kneaded eraser to lighten up my pencil lines so that they would not show through as much through the watercolor as once your watercolor is dry, you can no longer erase the pencil lines. For the violets, I'm using that same uh, magenta rose color as well as some quinacridone violet, which I am mixing together to make a pretty violet color and then I also have it watered down a bit so that it's not as dark as when it comes right out of the pan which working with these Rosa Gallery Botanical 28 colors that I have the violets come out very very deep and dark which they're absolutely gorgeous but when I paint with them I like to work with washes of those violet colors so that they're not quite as dark initially as these two colors. For me anyway, I've seen that they're very hard to pick back up off the paper. So once they're down on the paper, they will leave that color behind even if you try to pick them up later with like a paper towel or a wet brush. Um, they're kind of there for good. <laughs> At least a little, you know, a lighter version of what you put down will be. So I like to water down the violet, it's the PV23, and also the quinacridone violet, which is a combination of PV19 and PB15. Those letters and numbers that I'm reading off, um, those are just the names of the pigments. So if you have a different set of watercolors that you're using, but you want it to look the same as the painting that I'm creating you can look to see if it does tell you what the pigment colors are and then even if they have a different name for their colors you can match the pigment numbers to get the same results or similar results So for the shapes of the violets, again, it looks like a heart shape on the top and then three petals on the bottom with the largest being the petal in the center. 
and each violet I'm doing a little bit differently. Some of them I'm starting with the magenta rose and then adding in the violet color afterward. And some I'm starting with the violet color and then adding in some of the magenta rose afterwards. You don't need to be using the same exact colors that I'm using at all. But if you have a kind of a magenta pink and a nice purple or violet color, you can use a combination of these two colors to make a very similar effect for your own painting. For the petals, I really like to charge them with a bit of a darker shade of the color, a darker version of the color, or maybe a slightly different color, different hue adding into it. So you can see how I'm um, just dropping in a little bit more color into the still wet violet by um, going back into the violet with just a little bit more of the same color or a bit of a different color and while they are still wet it will dry in a way where you won't have like a, a hard line of where the two colors are meeting or like I think they call it a water line it'll blend in nicely softly together Once the violets are dry, you can go over them with a second coat of color. If you are using paper that is not 100% cotton, sometimes when you go on top of your initial color or your first layer of color with the second one, your brush will pick up the color from the paper, so it's harder to layer multiple, you know, use multiple layers. But if you use a cotton paper, 100% cotton like the Arsh paper that I'm using, it allows you to create layers without picking up that first initial layer that you added or that you put down. Um, so I really do recommend using a high quality paper if you do want to play around with using layers. Um, or even charging your colors with uh, different colors or darker colors. It just, it's just easier to do with it. So to go over the name for this one, I'm using the same pen as the last one, which is the Ultra Fine Painters Marker in uh, metallic gold. And I'm using just my cursive that I think I learned in first grade <laughs> is not anything special but um, so how whatever penmanship you have however you want to do it I think using that metallic marker makes it look um, it gives it that little extra special pizzazz it definitely helps out my handwriting for sure <laughs> so for the stems of these violets, I'm using that same green, which is a combination of the emerald green and the burnt sienna. I am charging the paint a little bit here where the stem meets the main stem and where it meets the flower with a little bit extra paint just to add more interest and in that darker color. I'm just going over my pencil lines with the very tip of my brush and using the wash of color, the combination of the emerald green and burnt sienna, and trying to be careful to make them all about the same width so that one stem isn't super thick and another super thin so that they're all about the same thickness. And then I'm going over my first leaf shape, which is a little heart, and um, filling it in with that same combination of the emerald green and uh, burnt sienna. You can use whatever green that you have, whatever green that you like. This is just happens to be what I thought was a pretty combination for the violets. To add just a little bit more interest to these stems, I'm charging the color with just a little bit of the ultramarine blue on the tip of my brush. Because the stems are still wet, it blends in nicely. The center of each violet is left 
um, just the paper just white as I'm going to be going back in and adding a little bit of yellow to the center of each violet. After the stem dries, I'm adding in the second heart-shaped leaf. As you can see, I should have waited for the stem to dry just a little bit more as it does have a bit of a fuzzy line to it now as it was just a little bit wet. Then I add in the cadmium deep yellow into the center of each and then just a teeny tiny dot of the magenta rose. And now you have a beautiful February violet bookmark or name bookmark. All you need is a tassel. For our next bookmark, this one is a combination of the primrose and the violets. I started the same way with the 140 pound watercolor paper, uh, two inches by six or eight inches. I wrote the word love right up the center of the bookmark. And then at the end of the last letter, I start the stem of the violets and primroses. For the first flower, I'm doing the violets in the same color, the magenta rose, and then also the quinacridone violet, and the it's just called violet in this set, but it's a little bit of a bluer violet. Some of the petals I start off with the wash of the uh, magenta rose that you see me making a little bit more of here. To make the wash of the magenta rose, I use about five brushfuls of water, and this is the number six round brush, and just a couple um, swipes into the, the paint of the color. And then I also have a wash of the darker bluer violet and a wash of the a little bit redder quinacridone violet. So each of these violet flowers that I'm painting, I start in a different way, but each of them has the two um, petals on the top, which is almost in a heart shape or like bunny ears. And then the three petals on the bottom with the center petal being the largest and then one on each side of that large center bottom petal that are just a little bit smaller. Each of the vi violets I want to look a little bit different. So some of them I start off in that blue violet color and then maybe add some magenta rose to it. Some I start in the quinacridone violet color and add maybe some magenta rose to that one too. Some I start in the magenta rose and then add some violet to that. So you can really do them however you want. For the first primrose, I'm going over the outline with the magenta rose and then rinsing off the color from my brush and going into the center of the petal so that the darker color bleeds into that um, the lighter, almost just water. For the next three petals, I'm doing it a little bit differently. I'm starting off with just water on my brush or an almost all the way rinsed out brush where it's mostly just water. And I'm coloring in the shape of the petal after the entire petal is colored in with um, a very, very watered down little bit of pink or just water. I'm then going in and using the more uh, the darker wash and going around the outline of the petal and seeing how that um, the darker color is mixing in with the almost just water that I started the petal with. For the third petal, I'm doing it the same way where it's um, I've rinsed off my brush so there's just a little tiny bit of that paint still on the brush and I'm painting in the entire petal with that and then I'm going back in on the outline with the darker wash and letting it kind of bleed together. Um, then I'm going in with my brush and using it as kind of like a sponge to manipulate the color a little bit where I thought it was getting just a little bit too dark and soaking it back up with that dry brush 
kind of like a sponge and wiping it on the paper towel. For the fourth petal, I'm starting it again the same way where I've rinsed off the color from my brush and I'm filling it in with mainly just water and then going over the outline of that petal with the rose color, the magenta rose. And you can see how it has that beautiful wet on wet drying effect. For the leaf for the violet, I'm using that same color combination with the emerald green and the burnt sienna. Oh, so here I have my second leaf. It's just a little tiny leaf, a little heart. I love the way that the February flowers have so many hearts included in their, uh, the way that they're created. With the primrose, you have the heart shape of the petals. And with the violets, you have the heart shape of the leaves. And also you could think of the top two petals perhaps as being a heart shape as well. For the stems for these two different flowers, I have two different stems going into the E of the love, but you can just use one stem if that seems a bit daunting. And I'm using just the very tip of this number six brush. I went ahead and added in some of that same uh, magenta rose to the buds once the green outline dried. And now for the flower that is at the top behind the first initial primrose, I painted in with the darker wash that first petal, trying to make it look like it is the underside of the petal, and then outlined the three other petals, rinsed off my brush, and I'm now filling in the rest of it with just the water on the brush so that it will, the petals will have the darker outline on the petals. For the third primrose, I'm doing it in a very similar way where I start off with the outline for the petals, rinse off my brush, and then to get that lighter um, that lighter hue of that magenta rose, I'm using just mainly water on the brush and adding that in to color in the rest of the petal so that you have that darker outline fading in gently to the lighter uh, color of the petal. For this third petal, I'm doing it a little bit differently where I'm just going to outline it so that it will look like the sun is hitting it and it is um, a brighter, like a highlight on the petal. You can, I could have colored this in as well with some lighter wash, but I was worried it would um, not stand out as much from the flower underneath it or from the other flowers and it's of its own uh, primrose. And so I left it, I kind of like that effect. Um, but I could have used an even lighter wash to fill it in. So I'm adding the last final details, just a few little stems for the violets, and then for each uh, primrose and some of the violets as well, I'm putting in some of that uh, cadmium deep yellow just into the center to give it that uh, yellow that I saw when I was looking at uh, wild primroses. I found one that had it was very pink petals, pretty pink petals, and then it had some of that yellow in the center of each one. I just thought that was so cute. After adding in just a tiny bit of sparkle with the metallic pen to two of the primroses, I took my kneaded eraser, cleaned it up a bit. Any pencil lines you have, you'll want to very gently pick them up with your kneaded eraser. And then I created tassels for each of the bookmarks. If you're interested on how to make bookmarks or bookmark tassels for yourself, let me know. I can share a video on how I did it. But I know you can buy them. And um, while that might not be money saving, it might be a bit of frustration saving. It took me a little bit to learn how to make them. 
without wanting to pull my hair out. So you might just want to order tassels online or at your local store. Um, I did make these tassels. It was a bit difficult, but if you are interested, let me know and I will post the video on how to make them. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have fun making your February bookmarks. I think they will make a fabulous gift and I can't wait for you to try them out for yourself. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time.